Hello, and welcome back to Dial the Gate, the Stargate Oral History Project. I'm David Reed. I'm going to invite you into my dining room for this episode. The first episode, we walked around the house and saw all the different uh, pieces in my uh, Stargate uh, collection and some other series as well. Um, but we're going to focus more on uh, smaller compact pieces that are not on display in my house, but in my house, but are often in boxes normally. Um, so I went through my collection and, and pulled out not everything, but about 80% of stuff that I think would be interesting, because a lot of it's just random. Um, but we're going to go through those pieces now with Remington and Martin, and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy this second half of, of uh, my collection. So I'm really excited about these. Um, you saw the storyboards yesterday. Yes. For the opening of the show. This is from The Fifth Race. Oh. These are original. Very critical. Oh, uh, storyboards. Wow. It's cool. There's so much more detail in there than you think would necessarily be created for you. Think there'd be like some framing information and stuff mm -hmm. that they wanted, but but it's actually really it's exactly as in some senses how the scene was shot. The pencil sketches just blow me away. And, and, uh, and we almost have Jaffa lines. We <laughs> almost, there are Jaffa lines there. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yep. They're kind yep. of in shoes at this point. Look at their little feet. Yeah, That's exactly. So cute. <laughs> and what were the original Asgard made from? The silicon? Is that what yeah. they... That was yeah. The, the uh, they were first? taken from one from the Outer Limits. Right. So, silicone rubber. Yeah. Uh, Neil turns to look from aliens, one and two down the corridor. And just photocopy, you know. I've already drawn that. I'm not going to draw it again. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, so, I really love the, the, this design of their ship mm -hmm. or their corridor. How it was really represented over there. And, really and you know, they they really drove home the point of just how many Asgard would have come uh, out of curiosity to mm -hmm. the gate room. In this, in this drawing. What's going on? So I'm assuming there was a lot of digital Asgard in that scene. Obviously. Yeah, it's a it's a set extension. It was a matte yeah. painting that yeah, uh, Kent beautiful. Matheson did. Yeah, great um, work. I'm not going to go through all and of them. The, but, the Asgard uh, got much more detailed on these close-ups. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. This is a fantastic set. Again, uh, you've got nine uh, pages nine of them. Uh, mm -hmm. for this, this scene. Is that is that a... A significant number when it comes to these these drawings. <laughs> were, they, were they made in sets of nine? <laughs> Quite possibly nine chevrons. So <laughs> I'm really nine. I was I was really excited to come across that. So yeah. this is really cool. Well, this is this is a great yeah. uh, a key. I'm super impressive how much detail. Yeah. 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 What else we got, Remington? Well, we're gonna switch franchises. Well, oh, franchise, okay. We're gonna switch series. Oh, look at this. Do okay. you know what this is? The Atlantis logo. Yes. Um, their laptop decals. Oh, okay. Right. That's right. right yes. Uh -huh. And they used the um, Dell laptops? Yes, uh, Dell provided yeah. them yeah. Um, yeah. for, I'm pretty sure for free, uh, but the production was like, we don't get any. It's like just only the ones that appear on screen, Dell provided them, so <laughs> yeah. Dell was supplying the Pegasus Galaxy. Wow. So I always thought that that was cool. But yeah. Very nice. Steve. Yeah. I don't even know what's coming. These. Oh, okay. So, so not patches. all of the patches were actually um, thread. Some of them were, were printed. Oh, wow. Walter wow. Harriman specifically was. That may be one of his. So for the uh, SGC uh, uh, mission control specialists. Mm -hmm. And then when Claudia Black came along, she had such a smaller frame, they made Valis-sized patches. I don't know if you noticed. Yes, I, well, so. I did actually notice they were smaller. Yeah. Um, because the ones you often see on, on Daniel's character and Jack and stuff, they, they look quite big mm -hmm. uh, on there. And then when we were looking at them uh, prior to that, we'd seen they were rather large yesterday, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite... So. Why, uh, sorry, why the screen painting exactly? I don't know. It's... Maybe to save money. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, did they run out? It's, it's odd because 
you know? We have SGC patches. Yeah. But for them, they made the, I'm curious, I, I would love to talk with the, yeah. with the, some of the folks responsible for that. But yeah, I always thought that this was cool. It's and so tiny. The though. Icarus base, um, the patch that I have for Icarus base that we saw in part one, mm -hmm. um, is a female version. Okay. It's not the standard So they size. literally do scale it for people's frames. Uh-huh. Yeah. Feel for their frames. That's it. Um, some paper props. Paper, paper props. props. Okay. Does this ring any bells whatsoever? No, not at all. Uh, Catherine Langford's funeral? Yep. Right. If you're looking closely at the scene, you see people carrying them. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I didn't realize they had gone to the extent of actually creating a pamphlet mm -hmm. like that inside. That's, that's a huge amount of detail. I was a huge proponent at MGM at the time for the set of um, uh, Catherine's bedroom to take this. I sent them the image and I said, put this picture of her and her mother yes. in the set. Yeah. And couldn't get him to do it. Didn't do it. That's and too bad. I was like, that's, too, that's such a nice little nod. It would have you know? tied things together. Yeah. It, well, and we did manage to do that. You know, with so there were several suggestions that were made um, with the uh, uh, the Harcesis and the DHD. Yeah. And if you go through the, the cat, their book, um, the, the 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 mission book that they have, there's a picture of a gold mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And the Germans say it's just the DHD. It's just like the one in Germany. You know, because because it was stolen by that's the right. Germans. Yep. You know, after World War Two, and that's all a part of SG One canon. And I was really trying to get them to. That would have been a nice. I thought that it would have been, been such a nice touch. touch. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no. I suspect that the 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 internals there are created that have some reference to someone. I would imagine whoever created that. I, I don't think they've so. just created that. I'm sure they probably lifted that from something that I'm sure. had personal meaning to them. And it's it's possible, yeah. Yeah. Well, David, you've got That's some you've got some rare items here that uh, I know a lot of fans would uh, be driven. Uh, <laughs> I don't so, remember specifically. There were more wedding photos than just uh, the photo that we oh, saw. Oh wow! Sam, and you had so. some amazed to procure them. Yes. Wow. So. Okay. Well, David was actually Jack's best man. <laughs> yeah, I was um, 13. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's really cool. I'm sure a lot of fans would be very keen to um, to have replicas like that. Yeah. It's, it's very well done. Yeah. Do we have more from Jack's family? We, we may have some additional Jack... So, family heirlooms yeah so in um cold lazarus terrific yeah, yes yep. um so this is from 200 right that no is. that's from point of view point of view three. oh okay uh -huh. right, yeah. okay. it's way back yeah. so right. look at his hair yeah so <laughs> yeah sure so um Oh, so this was uh, this was Jack's son, right? Charlie. Son yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's right. So the one that I think this was in his maybe his bedroom or something. It's like in that. his uh, yeah. Some of these were in, in Charlie's bedroom. Some yeah. of them were in his, in Jack's cigar box. Yeah. So. Oh wow. Uh, Yeah, this was, was a great episode. I, I Forgive me, I don't remember the actress name here, but she did a wonderful Harley job. Harley Jane Kozak. She just did a wonderful then, job. Yeah, yeah so these were great. Sarah O'Neill, Winter Park, Colorado, HQ US Air Force, Pentagon, wow. Jack O'Neill. It's, it's so. all that sort of small detail that just gives it that real ring of um, authentic, doesn't it? It's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Perfect collection with these, these yeah. two sets here. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, these are cool. Um, there were a lot of production images that were taken, and I came across these of Michael. Um, there are a lot of Michael Shanks fans out there, and I was like, you know what? These are uh, these would mean something to uh, worth a preserving. Lot of people. Yeah, worth preserving. for his his hairdo. So. 
They really captured James Spader's hair. They yeah, did a pretty in, good job. In early seasons. Yeah, yeah. So. But Michael did such an amazing job of not only making the character his own, but totally believable that it had gone from James Spader to him. Yep. And beyond. You never really felt there was a jarring transition, yet he made no. it his own. It was really incredible. Yeah. In fact, sometimes when, you, when you've seen enough of it, you really can't imagine what James Spader was like without thinking so true. They're, 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 it's yeah, just, very much so. He owns, he um, owns this character. That really character. So, yeah. 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 Michael Shank's hair color picture is taken in daylight and in shade from daylight, uh, away from daylight, September 10th, 1998. Incredible. Wow. So, season two. Yeah. Very early. Yeah. Obviously went to a lot of trouble to sort of make that as close as, as they could. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, Richard never had Kurt's. Um, Kurt's no, there was no way that he could pull that off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Rick repeatedly says that. Yeah. So this was um, one of the original shots taken for Mitchell and his granddad in oh, wow. Stargate Continuum. So this is after the timeline was altered. So we sold the original that was screen used because it had a certain tear right. uh, pattern on it so we could easily tell what it was. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> on sale. Oh, this wow. is a replica. That's this cool. is not one of the ones used in the film. I and Jenny Steiben got together and we were part of the viral marketing team for Stargate Continuum. And... Uh, my we we at this point it was it was a big thing to create like websites that were like set in like the universe of the show mm -hmm. or the content being produced like if there was a corporation in a film that corporation would have a website yes. and then yeah. you see it on copyright 20th century fox so on and so forth i we created a blog a video blog called the informant blog and we set it in the altered reality in stargate continuum so this kid comes across Daniel Jackson's book. I love the picture <laughs> in the back. <laughs> and um, I, uh, we, in, in the episodes, he actually reads pages from the book. And so, um, wow, we create, I created content for it. Oh, wow. That's so, so he's, um, yeah. So I actually wrote material. So you're the author. Of I am. I, well, I mean, I don't know about that. It's definitely Daniel, but uh, so. That's fantastic. Uh huh. Yeah. Completely cool. devoted to the pyramids of Egypt. The major premise that the archaeological record bears witness to an evolution of pyramid design, construction, and function from beginning to end of the pyramid age is demonstrated brilliantly and completely. Yada 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 yada. So wow. that's um, great. What is this book? Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Is it one? Legends from Robert Silverberg. So I went to um, a used bookstore and I just found, because production actually sent me this cover uh, so that we could be, do a, uh, uh, this, so this is actually a, a true replica of the cover of the book. Uh, because, right, because yeah. it was a part of, um, uh, of the, the production of uh, getting the product out there for the, for the masses. And um, I went to the store and got this one. But the actual book on the inside of it uh, that they used in the show is, I can't remember edition, which edition it was, but the book is called The Coming of the Third Reich. <clears throat> so that was what was actually used. Oh, wow. So, and I've been trying to find it because I want the actual book to go inside the, of it. The, that, but that edition correct. is arbitrary. Right. You can find the book, I forget the author's name, but you can find the book on Amazon, but not that specific edition. So. I, I always thought that, that was unusual. Seventy percent off. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's great. It's just a nice touch. A For deal, sure. A deal at twice the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. You notice in Atlantis a lot of the the characters doing this on yeah, comms. Yeah, they have comms. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's all it is. I oh, know you've shattered my illusion. Oh wow. Wow. And so there was never a, there was never no. actually any. I thought it may have been a repurpose of, you know, when you see talk show hosts and they have um, an ear aid of some kind where they can get directorial assistance and comments. And it's interesting because I'm they, that they, wouldn't do that. they did use Motorola headsets in, in SG-1 yeah. quite a bit. Yep. Oh, yeah. They made these. They just went ahead and did this so they can just go. Yeah. Colonel Caldwell. <laughs> so. Excellent. Yeah.
It's it's always a, an interesting throwback to something simple. It just does the job, it, you know? It does the job, but it sort of just helps create that entire illusion. That's it? Yeah. And they must have made so many of these. There were oh, yeah. 40, 50. It was ridiculous. Yeah, almost Because you would lose that so easily. Yeah, yeah they would drop like you type in 3D printed. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, actually. Um, oh, I doubt it. This is 2000. Yeah, it might have been too early. It's very, it feels very shiny for that. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, I don't think so, but it's. Yeah. Just straightforward, you know? Straightforward little thing. I imagine we could probably make something like this now, the battery, you know? But it was always just the actor could just do this. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm. Well, if you think about things like AirPods, they're yeah, they yeah. have a lot of tech into a small mm -hmm. spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little charging port. Yeah, wouldn't take so. much at all, would it? What else do we have, Sir Remington? Uh, so I'm excited too because I'm discovering stuff. <laughs> it's it's like, oh yeah, goes. that thing. Yeah. Um. All right. Fan favorite. A fan favorite indeed. Okay. So. Um, there were, whoops, there were a lot of these in production, and there were several different kinds that were made. Replicator blocks. Replicator blocks, yeah. So the, this one. Well, Remington is flat. It's, yep. Um, yeah. So it's, when it's the like, guns took them out. So I'm seeing flat backed and I'm seeing double side. Mm. Uh-huh. Yep. So, there why, is, do you know why there were, some were flat and some were I don't know, it's just different production um, molds, you know? I, I want, I'm curious to know which one of these, I guess these would have been easier to produce. But these yeah, would have a, been the easiest to produce, they're flat. Okay. I think it's, these are the earlier versions. Yeah. I, I think they started with the flat ones. So this yeah. came from a huge box that we got of, of, um, P90 shells and replicator pieces that literally someone just swept up the floor <laughs> of the Odyssey at the end of Arc of Truth. And that's where those come from. Wow. So. That's interesting, some stuck together. Mm hmm. And then they. Yeah, because some of the joints of, yeah. of the, the replicators yeah. would have been just shot off. So. And we're not even looking at the walls. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's a whole yeah. other thing. Man, they made a ton of them. But I mean, you can see how. Well, I, it looks like they're coming together here, and I know, we may have a problem. Already. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm assuming that it, you know they make a new Star Game. That all of this would be digital, and in some senses, yeah. that'd be sad because you lose, you know, some of the great texture and the, exactly. the thinking that would have went into that. Yeah. That's, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I suspect that these were created for just those wide shots yeah. of the. Uh, the destruction on the floor of the Odyssey, and none of the walls have any bullet holes in them. You know, no. all of the shots specifically hit their marks. Yeah. So now yeah. So there's some definite damage to some of the human uh, devices, but uh, they were they were skilled. The uh, bullet holes did not get right. They were not like stormtroopers. <laughs> <laughs> they were skilled marksmen. Ah. Uh, hey, this is nice. Trying to, it's, is it gonna, it's not, so. Oh, so it is, it is. Mm -hmm. wow. So this, so it's got a little piece of tape uh, yeah. on here for the raised switch so that Amanda could, mm -hmm. you know, just, I, I used to be able to, but the, the surface, I guess is just too smooth. But um, yeah, she could just move it into position and just press the thing and just the softest move. And yeah, so. Wow. Oh, that is clever the way that's that's hidden there. Uh huh. Well, oh, sorry, is the switch here? Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Oh, so that she could she could, could lightly press. Right. Press it down and on the on the Asgard console and do that. Wow. Yeah. Last mm -hmm. version of the stone that they made before they went boom. Yes. And it's such a beautiful opalescent. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, red Isn't it? Pattern. It's just it's a wonderful pattern the way it's just uh, looped in there. And a clever way of disguising the electronics as well, of course. As as you can't see just the faintly from the bottom, mm. see uh, some production hardware. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's so cool. It is. It's really. It's so smooth. I'm assuming it's resin. It'd be 
resin, absolutely. Yeah. With what appears to be uh, an acrylic base. Mm hmm. Yeah. But how did they get how did they get the diffusion pattern in there? That's the. They they would have used some kind of pigment inside of, of transparent resin. Most Is it like a paint, or it could be painted from mm -hmm. the inside? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, because you can unscrew it there. Yep. So obviously they were they were going to use these on more than one occasion, right? I mean, yeah, they were yeah. used a few yeah. different times. I think they were definitely an unending. Yeah. So, but yeah, there were there were versions that were created earlier on, and these are like the later versions of it. Yeah. So, yeah. I like the idea of having the switch in the bottom. That's, mm -hmm. that's really yeah, because they, they just move it and then just, yeah. you don't even have to see that, because you don't really see them no, doing that, but it's just don't. kind of the life, you know, in their hand. But so. just the simplicity of removing any sort of mechanism from the top, mm -hmm. so it doesn't break the illusion. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is uh, familiar this to you. Very familiar to me. Yes, indeed. It took me a long time to work this shape out. Um, I suspect. Yeah, it looks like it's sort of a, a snail shell design, right? Mm -hmm. But when you actually look at it really closely, and it's kind of like multiple little shells put around. Um, That's right. It's a great little design. Um, the challenge I had with mine was making sure the electronics fitted into the same width. And, and it's because I know they powered theirs off, you know, through a costume or through some wires. Or through a, I didn't through want a to do that. Lithium battery. Yeah. It goes in there. Yeah. Okay. It goes like this. And then. If I can do it without breaking it. Please don't break it. Working on it. The battery is low, but um, you can still see it's it's doing its job. Yeah, so, fantastic! It's amazing. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it's great. So, and the, it's what's interesting. It's a highly customized PCB. It's printed circuit board inside. It is. Yeah, it is. and I think that's given the time it was made. That's even more impressive because it looks like it's it's some sort of custom silicon on there too. It's not just mm -hmm. shelf components that have mm -hmm. sort of been chosen. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I can't imagine how long they took to turn that around. And this it's, is probably the, ver I suspect this is the version from um, the high school reunion episode. Yeah. So, Bount I think it was Bounty. Yeah. So, I mean, here, like, you, you got this to, stick, so to, this the, is yeah. to stick to the actor. Yeah. So, oops, doesn't do much sticky anymore. But, uh, but I had seen a production yeah. photos of this when I was making my own version that had wiring go into the actor's costume. Yes. So they've, they've clearly done multiple varieties of this over the years. Yeah, because this was seven years later. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Over, over time, they, they would have yeah. dug these out of the prop storage and, and redesigned them. Yeah. That's all there is to it. What else do you got? Ah, another one of the items that don't function anymore, but I could have gotten a battery for before I did this and didn't. Alien Grenade from the Daedalus Variations. Wow, this yeah. is a nice just, little piece. You just push the button on top of that and it starts flashing. Oh yeah. Yeah. That is very cool and very heavy. It's, it's machined, yeah. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. It's machined aluminum, yeah, I, I guess. Twist it apart. You can or yeah. do you want to do that? Yeah. Might as well. Somebody spent some time on the lake. That's very cool. It's mm -hmm. again a quite a heavy piece. Yep. It's not even the thought that. Right? They've got like some sort of resin on the get. It sure looks like resin. it. Yeah. They mixed up a lot of resin in this shot. <laughs> they sure did. <laughs> they sure made a lot of resin. But I mean the the construction of this stuff. It's like, it's like, um, oh, yeah, yeah lefty was already tidy. It's like, um, uh, Bridget was saying, you know, they could have been making stuff for NASA. Mm -hmm. So, 
So in the theme of grenades. Yes, oh, rape wow. grenade. Right. So this used to work as well. So these actually come out through here. And there's a little trigger in here. I mean, there's no way that it still works now, but I can try. Um, so this is a replica, or obviously. This is an original. An original, yeah. okay. But yeah, I know it's dead. But yeah, all these would light up. These would glow amber. But um, wow. Yeah. In the theme of grenades. <laughs> Seems to be the theme of them. It's not, it's not every day you can have a theme of grenades. And we had one that opened, he twisted and closed it again. That's right, that was the operation. Uh -huh. Open, twist, close, and yeah. then, and then, then toss. toss. Yeah. 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 More Jaffa lines around that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's very cool. I'm curious how they got it open to put batteries and things in there, but... I, I think this cap comes off. Yeah, they just filled like it. it is. It looks like it's actually um, part of the structure. Well, this is here. Whatever's under here, they can unscrew and then pull the thing out. So it's probably that. So they, the screws probably go in and... Yeah, because it feels it more like it's in the middle. Right. Can move. Anyway, it could yeah. entirely be, so... Yeah. Okay. I think that's a homing beacon. From where? This I don't. It's really Wraith. Right. So it's here. Oh, okay. It's right oh, here. right. Okay. Yeah. So. Remington, adding to your theory that no LEDs of five mil or less were used. Oh, you know, I think it was an band. arm, an arm piece. There was yeah. an arm band. Yeah. And it was, it was a part of that. Now that, I'm, but it was still a part of the drone. So oh, yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. One of the things that make up um, Atlantis. So did that come with the wraith, um, with the costume that you have yeah. here? Right. One of the things that make up Atlantis significantly is their advance um, in crystal technology. So at all different kinds of acrylic pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, Asgard core. Pole jumper. This is a little little um, holographic sticker. holographic sticker. Yeah. And and the circuitry that has been printed on these crystals is amazing. Yeah. All different sizes. So yeah, look at that. Ancient circuitry, just to sell the illusion. So. go on and on with crystals for days, really. They, they created so many kinds for um, the show. Who's that? What's that? Might be me. Sorry. If that's from Star Trek. That may be. That sound. Yeah. You have a pocket pager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Size, so that one's not going to stand up on its own. Yep. So there's, there's an interesting thing for Atlantis, right? Because pieces that we've looked at have a lot of there's a lot of laser cut yes. work, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that? I you mean, you can tell that uh, they enjoyed using. Do you think this is cut. when it was? I, I don't know if it was commercially viable for them to do that then, and it hadn't been before. From, I, I from, from yeah. what I understand, and I'm sure David has more stories, but they were, the prop production was on the cutting edge of technology, and they had laser cutters and 3D printers and Pardon the pun. mills mm. really before they were widespread. They, they would always have whatever the latest manufacturing tools were, desktop wow. manufacturing, they had. Access. They had established that look. And, um, you know, they had established that crystal technology was a part of our ancestry, um, at least not necessarily, uh, not necessarily ancients at the time, but certainly the go old. So the acrylic was a pretty straightforward choice because, you know, you could cut them and you could engrave them and you could do whatever with them and, and, and make whatever, um, it's interesting, there's a combination of that seems to be like a raised day curl in there, mm -hmm. um, whereas the others seem to be... Um, well, these are just stickers. Just sort of um, embossed. 
Mm -hmm. and there's really three types. You've got the laser etched that you're yeah. looking at, Martin. You've got this gold foil or this blue foil sticker, and then you've got these transparent stickers. Yeah. yeah. And this looks the most like a traditional circuit board. Yeah. Yeah, so they've made a, a, a deco and just... A you've actually got... The, oh, yeah, you can see it there. If you look in the right yeah. light, there's like a deco. Uh -huh. There's yeah. some ancient lettering on here. Is that right, David? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't translated these, but yeah, there's... There's definitely some of that for sure. So, just little tricks to sell the illusion. Absolutely. It's a clever prop in that you don't have to like create intricate wiring and things like that, and you can repurpose it so many times. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's very clever. It's it. Just to do it. So we uh, went out to lunch and came back, and I went and bought um, batteries. Oh, it's <laughs> like I, I can get batteries for that. I might as well go wow. and get it to show just how cool that is. Oh, it goodness. is cool. Just push the button on it, and it. That's it. That's it. It's beautiful. Wow. Isn't that wild? And it's a, it's a, it's like a spinning top. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. We, we could, we could, we could wreck no. your tabletop. You could. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, I've already got some scratches. What's a few more? Yeah. Uh, wow, that's cool. Absolutely wild, right? I wonder why they made it as such heavy metal. Um, because they had the money. Yeah. Like we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right. I mean, because I mean, they could have been a season right. six. They could have brought the the, the characters yeah. back. So yeah, 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 definitely great. So do you guys recognize these? I do. Yes. Yes. What are they? System Lord patches. These are these are. They're the, not patches. They are Jaffa, stencils. Jaffa stencils. Head tattoos. Head tattoos. <laughs> Anubis, wow. you, Malak, Nirti, which one so is, far? Which one is this dude? Kansu, Kansu, yeah. Zipakna, um, um, Herer, yeah, yeah, Cronus, Hathor, yeah, um, um, Seth, Seth, yeah, Kansu, no, um, Imhotep, yeah, Imhotep, Imhotep, Imhotep. <laughs> yeah, um, 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 I'm trying to remember. So I've, I've got, um, there's a couple on here later in the season. This is um, Aries, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, Wayne okay. Brady's. Um, and one of these are Svarog. I think that's Svarog. And then this one, I can't remember. But it's, it's perfect because it'll give everyone a reason to comment. Yes. So, but yeah. Yeah. Just little, just little stencils. So... So they, they would they would apply these to the actors' foreheads uh, for a quick and easy makeup session. That's it. Because mm -hmm. some of some of the tattoos were were latex, rubber, or or another material, and they were raised. Yeah, and some of, yeah, that's right. I always thought they were like some sort of like plastic badge or mm -hmm. something like that. So you just do. Okay. Office stencil. Yeah. Right. So this would be stuck, and then they would they would brush over That's it, with, exactly. with whatever kind of uh, paint they used, and yep. So they would just put that on there and yeah. spray it, spray it, airbrush it, and, and then peel it, it off. off. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Very cool. cool. Yep. This is Quick. great. You you you've got you've got a fantastic pretty much everybody. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. You guys ready for one of my uh, favorite pieces? Yes. Yes. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. You recognize this? I do. You do? I recognize the, 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 the symbol. Who does this belong to? I couldn't tell you by name. Janice, the inventor. Janice, the inventor. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, David, that's, that's that, incredible. Yeah, that's a really cool piece. Wow. More of it, yeah. Yeah, some of them are Look at and this. better than others are, but yeah, because yeah. he's you can see him in the episode inserting wow. them in there and oh, that is, wow, that is gorgeous. Yeah, that's great. Ah. Oh, hence the, mm -hmm. hence the batteries. Yeah, impressive. Most impressive. Yes, and I have since acquired some Janice-related items. No, and I've kept them with them. Um, more. More okay. pieces. More crystal. Um, where's the... 
Is that it? It's remarkably effective to back to the uh -huh. like that, isn't it? it yes, yeah, they take care of it. Yeah. And all the switch is just, is just hidden yeah. there. Yeah. You know? It's remarkably um, effective in, in normal life. But yeah, you got this here just... Yeah. Janice, that's what that says. And then you can translate that. I'm sure someone will translate this, but like this is, like this is, um, like this is the briefcase of Janice. Is basically mm -hmm. what this says. It's it's font transposition. But there's someone who can, you know, translate this for me and put it in the comments section, please and thank you, because I'm too lazy. But um, I've actually done my fair share of it. And with this, I keep a couple of, I'm pretty sure Janice related items. Um, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so this is a Janice costume card. Look at that. Oh, great, cool. So, yeah. Um, An actual piece of, of his wardrobe. Uh-huh. An uh, authentic piece. Who was it that put these out? Rittenhouse Archives. Really? Okay. Rittenhouse did all of your trading cards. And then Melia McClure. And she played the ancient Melia. <laughs> <laughs> How There's a couple instances where <laughs> Very they kept, they, they kept uh, the actors. I don't know how do you get clearance for that? You know, I mean, do you just you just pay them a little extra to use their actual name, or how does that work? Or did they ask? I don't want to have to yeah, learn. I'm yeah, not sure. I don't want to know that. Actually, you know what? I may have translated this already. Ooh. I wonder what that was. Um, did you do the work? What did you do, Ray? So, be this, the accumulated knowledge of Janice, almond by nature, desire to know. That's what it says. <laughs> Great. Uh, too funny. Well, it just saves someone a lot of time. I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool piece. What it a is. fantastic course, piece. It is amazing. Janice and I, we go way back. Got a couple of more pieces here. Um, I don't know if this was ever used on screen, but it sure does look a heck of a lot like the um, knives that were used in the show. Absolutely. Wow. That's a Jaffa knife right there. It is? It sure looks like it to me. Okay. Yeah. This was a gift from Jerry Rector to some guy, and some guy sold it to me. But um, Whew. That's, that, right? that's a legitimate knife. This yes, that's a real stuff. knife. That This would not have been... Uh, uh, Wow. Safe. That's, that would have been a hero. Yeah. yeah. Martin. Oh, goodness. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a knife. <laughs> <laughs> this is a knife. Um, but uh, wow. Um, this feels quite lethal, really. In yes. Sort of sense, doesn't it? I mean, it's really. Like this, this might have been what they they molded and cast in order to make entirely them. possible. The plastic, yeah. rubber, the plastic rubber ones. I mean, the detail here, the sort of uh -huh. metal beading that they've got, uh -huh. is stunning as well. Yeah, I think they're very safely get that back to you. But uh, wow, it's great. Yeah. Homeworld security. Nice. <laughs> right. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Right. So. I'm sure it says something there, as long as we get that on film. So, yeah. so this is your ticket into Cheyenne Mountain, perhaps? Oh, this is the ticket into the Pentagon. This, is, this will get you, Homeworld this Command. Will get you into the Pentagon. Yeah, these are from Stargate Universe. So, so. Have, have you considered driving to DC and <laughs> checking it out? You know, I don't want them to know that I have clearance because they may take me this is, this you know, is for a, yeah, a is ride or two. So, yeah. Do you recognize this? No, I don't, I don't think so. It's a part of the capacitors that are attached to the outside of Stargate's, uh, of uh, the SGC gate. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have never seen any of these uh, in no. a while. Yeah. Wow. It's a section of it. That's they cool. were mostly um, uh, mop strainers. Okay. That was the main piece that you saw, painted red. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. That's cool. Uh, the clamps, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. They were holding the gate. That's wow. that. This is this was in. It's cool. Hundreds of shots. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't recognize. It. No. Nope. Isn't that wild? <laughs> I mean, it's your fault that we didn't recognize it, but uh, maybe <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh, that's funny. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's that's, that's a great piece, David. That's true. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Really glad that I have that. I'm just curious for people who want to start a collection themselves or want to look for specific pieces well after the shows sort of and auctions have happened. How do they go about doing that? In order to buy props nowadays, what you're relying on is somebody who had bought them before who is now willing to borrow them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and a lot of times that, uh, as David pointed out, that could be eBay. Um, but it's People also, get sick. You know, people people yeah, of course. Into debt, yeah, so. yeah there's various life reasons people do it. And, so. and uh, something else I've noticed is that uh, more and more items from uh, people that worked on the show are, are mm -hmm. starting to be let go yeah. now, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, 20 years plus later, where they just aren't interested in keeping them anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's not always a case of just auction houses, it's not eBay and... Yeah, the, and also who you know, the right place, right maybe, time. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Things yeah. Like right place, right time. This, well. this yeah. stuff uh, in the Facebook groups yeah. that, that comes up uh, recently, I saw some stuff come up, some smaller items, some costume items overseas. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the link. Okay. Baby monitor. <laughs> Janai. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and massively light, too. Mm -hmm. It was um, functional, David. It looks like there's no. a battery case. They, they had ones that were baby monitors, but uh, I'm pretty sure they were baby monitors. But uh, no, this is, yeah, this is, so this is, this was a separate prop and right. this was a separate prop, I think. Right. Uh, but they, they had these on their arms. So, so it's, I guess Remington had made a mold and just sort of kind of replicated. Kind of looks like. Enormously yes. light. It looks like they molded yeah. a commercially yeah. available electronic. Yeah. There's the little wheel for the volume. Yeah. So, yeah. So this said like something like panel, like remove or something. I forget what it was. You can translate that. But these were from Aurora originally and then you just saw them throughout all of atlantis yeah and they were just oh, literally yeah. plantons yeah foam foam and then paint that's it oh so, how about something from stargate universe okay Ooh, this one transmits this one receives, <laughs> this one receives. so they had hard ones for the uh, to interact with physically, and then they had ones like that to um, use uh, on screen. And this one, I don't know if it still will, it probably won't. If I can find a switch for it, they sent this to me, had no idea that there was a that, that it powered, mm. but you can tell you can see a, the tiny circuit board in there. Uh huh, mm. absolutely. I'm trying to remember. At first, that. I thought it was like a SIM card or something like that, but then it occurred to me it was probably so long ago that SIM cards were larger than that, yeah. maybe. Uh. Compact flash. Yeah, compact flash. Yeah. yeah there used right. to be a button, and these used to light, um, but they don't anymore. So I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. What I need to do is open it up and um, replace that. Replace Power it. Cell. Yeah. And it, I'm sure it'll come right back to life. So, but yeah. I'm curious how you would do that because it. You'd have to cut into the. Yeah. Cut um, the, the, yeah, the silicone and, and, and take the battery yeah. out. But yeah. Mm. Silicone is very forgiving. That's certainly true. But. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it because I bought it from them and then, you know, I... Um, Try to stick it on. And, yeah, yeah, and I pushed the button and it lit and it wasn't in the description like that it did that. They didn't seem to know what they were doing. I mean, it was like, you know, that's... I was, I was looking, it's like, this lights, this works. And it wasn't a part of the description. And it's like, how, how much more could they have gotten for it? They tried. They probably needed somebody... Uh, you know, doing proper research. You knew the show, yeah. Mm. So that was not the only instance where I bought something from them that was wrong. It's like, that's mm. not what that is, you know? Or that's not who wore that. And they had to give me some money back. Oh, it's got like little hearing aid batteries. Right. In the back. Exactly. Oh. Wow, that's cool. So uh, these have been seen in the show before. Uh, this is just something that I bought for it. Um, this is probably one of the prizes of my collection. This is General Hammond's wedding ring. Oh, okay. There were two of them made, uh, or two of them that were used. Um, the other one was sold, and it was like, okay, I'm paying that price for the other one, <laughs> so I can get my hands on it. Um, but that's uh, so Don Davis wore this yep. throughout yeah. the series. He sure so did. I always wondered whether actors just 
you know, if they were portrayed as married, just wore their own wedding rings and nobody really... Right, no, they, they were they were really specific attention. about but, that. So, but yeah, I know but, I used to no, they used to wear that. Wow. Yeah, so... Yeah. Oh. That's a great piece. That's, that's, that's I love a, that piece. So piece, Don's yeah. always, you know, yeah. in the in the set. So, because yeah. that's always... What a neat way to display it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I found that online, so... Yeah. It's like, that works. So, I've got another one. I think you... I have shared this one before. This was... Um, there were two of these production made, um, at least, and this is the Eye of Raw that was the MacGuffin in Full Circle. Yeah. Season six. Yeah. Um, yeah, show that. Sorry, there's a like a mm -hmm. sort of. A, I I guess it's kind of a. They've embedded some sort uh -huh. of. Uh, in the crystal. Not sure if it's metal or if it, or what that is. I it's think it's just a just a patch of some patch, sort. Or, yeah. I don't. Yeah, it's it may be metal. Yeah, it's got that mosaic um, glass uh -huh. scheme yeah, to it. Yeah, it almost looks like um, stained glass, but it's not. And obviously, I'm missing the ring that it was in. Uh, I think Brazad has that one, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. Wow. Yeah, a friend of mine it's came nice across place. that, and I was like, okay, how much do you want yeah. for it? <laughs> so, because we never had that in prop works. Yeah. So how come there were pieces that PropWorks didn't have? I thought there were Prop previous Works. sales. Previous sales. So okay. yeah, there, there like a lot of the larger pieces, like the anti-replicator gun from um, New Order. Those were gone long before PropWorks came along in production and did. So. Legends memorabilia sold a lot. A lot, very much yeah. so. And right. little known fact: before Legends, uh, they were selling some stuff directly through MGM. Mm -hmm. so, Stargate Legacy. I think that that's so who did it, yeah. So, what do you think this is for? What do you think this is for? It reminds me of my dentist. It's yes, so nice. absolutely. So, um, this is one of Nearty's surgical items from Rite of Passage. Yeah. Took me a minute. So you've got coat hooks, uh, some kind of gas. CO2 canisters. CO2 yeah. canisters. Yeah. Yeah. Gun. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Pelican. Yeah. And you've got yeah. the gold etching. Jaffa lines. Jaffa lines. Got yeah. And your dental uh, yeah. section. Yeah. But yeah. This is like a genuinely dangerous prop. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, Martin, how, how, do, how do you think TSA would feel about you bringing this up? <laughs> There's Not no way. Very good. I don't think Not they, very good. That. they would allow that. They can be very innocent about that. Yeah. Not very good. So yeah, but it definitely looks uh, imposing. So, I, but I love that you know the little pieces that they added for the that the inset reminds me of the staff weapon. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the chips. Ooh, and I'm literally scratching my table. <laughs> okay. We should put that one. In. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Out, out, out. So. Uh, okay. The veneer. Yeah. Um, no, not yes. The Vanier uh, sidearms from um, First Contact in the Lost Tribe. Mm -hmm. Evil Ray, right? The, or the, evil, the Asgard. evil Asgard. So these, they were just glow sticks, and uh, oh, you can replace it if you. Can. Absolutely, yeah. Because as they went through production, they would have needed to um, and yeah. keep them going. So. That's a clever use of the glow stick. Yep, just build it right in. Yeah. So. Yeah. And is that uh, rubber, or yep. is, is this like a sort of one of the action props so you don't fall over and hurt no, yourself? No, there was else? the only versions of these that were yeah. made were that. So. Were that? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, boy, if you really feel so light. Yeah. I hear Joel Goldsmith's march for them <laughs> as I hold that. Yeah. Interesting, sort of, they just use, use like washers or something. Mm -hmm. It just brings it up. I think it was just so that they could just, just like hook it. Yeah. I bet uh, the suits were transformed by the time I yeah. got a hold of one. There so. may have been just to connect with magnets, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Wow. That's really cool. We know of opportunity wow. and later reused in um, Reckoning 1 and 2. So. Ancient um, panel. So. I love this pattern they put mm -hmm. in. That sort of almost marbled stone look to mm -hmm. it. It's, um, Absolutely. It's clever. And these were signed at GateCon 2018. So, wow. Yeah, Barry Campbell, Bruce Walashen, 
uh, Colin Cunningham, Dean Aylesworth. So, yeah. Very cool. Absolutely. I assume there was multiple of these. So oh, yeah. yeah. I remember the console. Whole array. And it was an Absolutely. array, right? There, there are quite a yeah. few of those. Yeah. This, however, there are not quite a few. Of them. Oh, wow. Yes, the DHD. Yep. I forget what constellation this is. And I should know this, but I don't. It's, it's written on your posters we looked at. Yeah. It is? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes. Like the ones we just looked at, yeah. yeah the ones we just um, the uh, paint job has has uh, not been, uh, well, I mean, I need a light source, but anyway, so it's, um, I've gotten, oh, look at you. Okay, yeah. so. All oh, right, the case that comes yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, so I put some little, uh, electric tape on there so it, it doesn't go through yeah. all the holes, but yeah, see like there. Yeah. But um, yeah, it would have backlit it. Wow, this is a nice piece. Handy dandy. Yeah. And, and there's that pattern I was talking to you about, about the puddle jumper. Uh, once again, all the dappled sort of uh, paint layers that come in just give it so much depth. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks great. looks great. Yeah, it looks like a planet from high up. Yeah. It kind of gives you a bit of an illustration of how big the DHD is, right? Because you're just pressing one of these down. Mm -hmm. and, just one. And this is just one. <laughs> right. Um, and so... 39? Yeah, 39 uh, of these around. Yeah. Yeah. That's the outer ring. And almost that illusion that it's curved, which it is, right? You've got the curved diocese that comes out of the DHD, but, um, but it's, it's flat. Exactly. We're uh, going to move a little bit into the Ori era. Cool. Wow. Nice. Wow. I love the paint job. Yeah, it's really impressive. Now this would be an Ori Commander helmet. Is right? it? Well, they, they yeah. made the half face and then the full face. Yeah, that's true. So. That's right. They've almost sort of got their own hieroglyphics sort of mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah, their really own culture. Yeah, it's really interesting as well. But yeah. yeah. Some of them had like the full mask and then the half, so. I assume they had to make multiple sizes, right? Different actors. I different don't sizes. know. I, I would, oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't remember radically different sizes. Or something like that. From what I've seen, they all originated from the same molds. And what they would yeah. probably do is downsize them, if anything, with right. some of those foam pads. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Then you only have to do one. Yeah, and just sure. them. Yeah. And so inside they've got like a... Let me try that. Okay. It fits you! It doesn't fit me. It does fit quite well. Wow. I wouldn't describe this as the most comfortable helmet I've ever worn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks good on you, Mark. It looks good. Well, I think I'll try this through TSA. Right, exactly. Yeah. That should work well. It reminds yeah. me a lot of Thor's helmet from... Yeah. Um, it truly does. Samaria. It's surprisingly yeah. comfortable, actually. Yeah. It really is. But again, it has a little bit of heft in it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? You can it's really, Yeah. Oh, it's true. Yeah. yeah. It feels quite cold to touch, too. But mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, it's really tough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. hallowed! This ah, is the aura. Now this you want to talk about a heavy piece? Um, wow! Yeah, this is. Uh, do you think this is solid resin, like over a steel frame, or a steel? With frame? how heavy it is, it is either solid resin or it has a metal core. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wow. That is so there were a couple that we sold that had batteries in them. Okay. That uh, there was a, there was a hidden switch like here. And it would make the thing glow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was all done in post production in hand. So, this one um, has a crack in it, and it's a shame because I would love to fix it, but you'd have to take the whole thing apart. Mm. Looks so, that way. But and uh, I don't think you could. I think it looks to be sort of cast one piece. There. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, but I got it this way. I saw it yeah. uh, before we were selling. I knew that I wanted one. And I was like, you know, that's the one that I'm going to set aside for myself because I don't want someone to get a cracked one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I got it. It, it is generous. It is generous. Yeah. But I, um, yeah, so it, it came to us that way. So and at I mean, first I thought it was because there was like a light in there or something. But and you can see that there's a hole for one. But you know, you could you could use this to your advantage. By I could. a little LED candle in there. I could. Absolutely. Yeah. be a lot of work before each show, though, for some, some smaller detail. But if I'm going to, like, take it out, then absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, um... 
Yeah, you got the I mean, that is the one thing. You've got enough space in there to put something quite bright. Yep. So you could do Especially it. with the LEDs now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Martin. And, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so if we kind of... It's a, it's a little directional. It's a little directional. That. That's really cool, actually. It works really well. Hey, yeah. hey, I like that a lot. Yeah. For sure. And you've got lots of, mm. um, uh, lots of space to... Oops. Put a bunch in. Turn that off. Yeah, it worked really it well. <laughs> you guys are so close. Two more clicks. Two more clicks. It's <laughs> like ten. You got more. designs here. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Here. Wait. I it's... know. I'm telling you. And so, this metal cap. On the end of it there. So you could pommel people really good. Absolutely. I mean, so. resin has weight, but this has It's very heavy. I weight. think that there's there's got to be like a steel rod in it or Considering something. Considering you yeah. got that, that uh, steel end cap, I would say so. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. It's surprising yeah. they didn't put like like a very strong piece of PVC pipe through it and keep it really yeah. light, you know? But that's because that's significantly heavy to wield around. You just feel yeah. like when you're carrying this, like Moses or, you, you know, it's, it's a very private <laughs> thing going on there. 10,000 years of human. Yeah, <laughs> right, well, exactly. Yeah, very, very heavy and strong, but it's impressive. I think you should put the line in there. I think that's good. I just have to remind myself to always turn it on. It doesn't, you don't see it on camera. It's usually off. Yeah. Uh, I guess you do, maybe we do see it a little bit. Yeah, I guess we do see it. So. I mean, you went to the trouble of breaking it just so you have it. So right, exactly. So, oh wow. So Dan and staff. Yeah. I don't know where they put their power source because I, maybe they just put it in here, but um, yeah, so they took the staff and they uh, shortened it for this. But you get to see uh, the production made, uh, detail mm. so just straight from the feature film just all, continue all to modify details. it yeah yeah all of these lines and then you got this is this foam is rubber i'm guessing urethane rubber urethane yeah yes. the joppa lines that's right so what do you have to do to look after urethane rubber over time to protect urethane, urethane rubber is is very resistant um this one uh, as david pointed out it's foam backed so what you what they would have done is they would have brushed uh, urethane rubber into the mold right. and then backed it with foam, which is a pretty rigid way of making a prop. Mm. Your your latex rubbers and silicone to an extent are, are where we see degradation over time, but this urethane will hold up very well. Wow. Yeah, that's great. So for the the one that worked, there was a round button here, and you would press it and it would go. Oh, okay. So the hero versions did have mechanical uh -huh. working pieces. There was one or two, uh, yeah, the, uh, by the end of it. And they had batteries in yeah. the, the crystal at the end fitting because that's where the ba the power source was right. on it. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a beautiful piece. So I've seen a fan produce one that had a mechanical wow. mechanism. Um, a beautiful piece. Of that's work. wild. Yeah, yeah. And this really nice. this one is is an open. It looks semi-open. It's not fully. Mm -hmm. I thought they small. were all like this. Well, they you've got closed steps and open heads. This one it kind of looks almost in between. I yeah. didn't realize that the closed ones were more closed than this. So, have you seen one in person? Yes. Okay. Interesting. I did. I never occurred to me. Yeah. It's the way. It's not like the other one, but it's still got it. You're most, still... Of the, most of the weight's down here. Yeah, That exactly. makes me curious about yep. what's going on down here. But, um, Keep the balance in it. Yeah. yeah. So it helps the actor because it's not light. You know, it's like this is, this yeah. is something that's not insubstantial. Yeah. So, so when, they, when they're generally moving with it, they're naturally going to convey the right uh -huh. amount of right. resistance with it. Exactly yeah. right. It's got the, the, the weight. Yeah, makes sense. That's it. Yeah, so cool. oh, God, I think one of your favorites here, David. So, remember when I was talking about um, pieces that I wanted, but I could, I, there was no way that I was going to, to prevent a, another fan from uh, from having an opportunity to buy it? Uh, ZPMs were, were like the ZPM from the Siege Part 3, and this was another. This was the Teltrack device that was created for 200 because the ones from. Um, um, evolution were the same size, but they were CG. Right. So, but this one they worked out the um, the way to the actually cube in light it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. this is just yeah. one of my favorite all-time pieces. 
If you got the oscillation. Yeah, that's nice. So the, the ZPM does something very similar. Yes. But um, it's just one of the coolest things there is. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Would you like to see inside it? Yeah, I would. You can come around and call and have a look. Uh, say okay, yep. So there's a battery. The batteries are here. Yep. In a. And a small switch under there. Uh huh. So just uh, the switches, yeah, just right here. And... I'm trying to work out what this is made this of. Is, this vacuum is vacuum formed. This is vacuum formed. It's ABS. It plastic feels very shirt. strong. I, I mm -hmm. Normally, vacuum form feels a bit well, weaker, but obviously, a ABS plastic. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the Lego bricks of the world. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They use the same uh, material for the GDOs on the back for the back plate. Right. Just a sheet of ABS, a uh, textured plastic, just like this. But yeah, it's one of the coolest things there is. Yeah, it's great. It looks wonderful. I love all the symbols on the side. Yes. Yeah. Where, where is it? Oh, the switches. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had sold. We had sold this, and I think the second live auction. And I'm living in Arizona at the time, and um, uh, I saw it on eBay, and uh, got a hold of it. I couldn't believe you listed it. I couldn't believe it. And so when that bad boy came back into my, my hands, I was like, hello again, yeah. <laughs> you know? Because it was gone and now here it's back, so. All things come home. Right? That's it. Indeed. That's it. Indeed. How so much is there left? Uh, we've got uh, four or five items. Okay. Wow, that is a nice piece. Ah. Oh, the stones. Yes. Communication stones. Sorry. And then Remington's various replicas. And let me tell you something, it's become trickier and trickier to figure out which is which. Let me tell you. So he has a stunt stone. A stunt stone. Yeah. Oh but yeah, like, it's kind of a, a made of TPU or rubber. Uh, yeah. Yeah, rubber. Wow. Rubber foam. Well, first of all, Remington, brilliant job. I mean, you really, it, it, you can't really tell the difference. <laughs> you can't. I mean, you yeah. really have to be digging for detail to find the difference there. That's that's amazing. But yeah, there's what? Who would have thought that you know a little scene with Dan Castellaneta, mm. uh, an clip show would turn into a centerpiece for um, storytelling for the next two shows and especially the third one. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, well that, you, you take one and, and let's, <laughs> let's switch seats. <laughs> that's, that's, it. that's great. Absolutely great. It's a beautiful job. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah. So you talk, yeah. that's really fantastic. You're talking about Stargate Universe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. original Kino. This is taken from the Kino sled and uh, a fan got a hold of the sled and basically took a crowbar and popped these off the bottom and then oh, wow. put them together because that's how that's they're just halves mm -hmm. of uh, uh, some of you know and then they just put them together and created it but it's it's technically screen used it's a lovely so, piece it's re Oops. repurposed <laughs> it's also it's got a mind of its own it does its own. spheres tend to sphere so just great detail too, the way they've got the sort of um, circles. Do you have a little light, light as well? Still? I do. Yeah. To show that off, yeah. what we did yesterday, because that was just cool on camera. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. That outer sphere. So. Yeah, yeah James Robbins is just a sick genius. He's an amazing designer. Yeah. Amazing. It's just incredible. Sure is. Work. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Ah, good point. Oh, so, yeah. Palm Skinner from um, 
I believe this is, is it infection? It was one of the last episodes of the show and they're aboard a wraith ship and um, this is the labyrinth. This used to turn on. I need to take it apart and replace that. Um, I don't know if it's just a light box or whatever, um, but yeah. Looks very so, familiar. Yeah. yeah very familiar. Pieces have fallen off of it, obviously. I need to have that redone. But um, I recently laser cut a bunch of those frame pieces. Can I help you out? Okay. Uh, anything to do to restore it, so yeah. It's very clever. And the mm -hmm. HP iPad. Yeah. Behind it, there's always an argument of which HP iPad it actually is. Stitch really? has yes. decided has yes. Did absolutely. he buy like a like the collection of them or Ryan, something? Ryan Nixon basically owns every last one of those <laughs> right. that there are. Yeah, I think he owes me one. I need to get a hold yeah. of him and say, "Here, take my money." He, uh, <laughs> he texted me yesterday oh. that remind to ask me to remind. Okay, how much are they going for? Uh, I want to say three fifty. Oh. Ah, okay, we'll talk. So, yes. So, but all they've done here is, it appears to be a sticker, right? Yeah, it's just That's a sticker so, of the, um, of the, the so layer. So, did they ever use the IPEX themselves yeah. as a, yeah. as uh -huh. a working uh, Earlier in the show they did, yeah. yeah. Later on they did, like, this is not a hero. Yeah. This is one of the ones that one of the guards... And if I remember yeah. correctly, it ran Windows Mobile. It did, yeah. and yeah. it's, you know, I've... I've done, I've handled the, one of the working ones before, and they're just so much trouble to, mm -hmm. get to, to play back because yeah. you're dealing with flash video files, mm -hmm. you have to get flash player. Oh, God. Yeah. All the software is hard yeah. to find. Yeah, that's it's very true. tricky. You should have come to San Diego. It, it, would, <laughs> it, it, would, it would be nice if, if somebody was working on like an Arduino powered uh, uh, you know, screen yeah. that could fit that iPad yeah. profile. Yeah. Just, just a bit. Just a bit. Mm. This is not the original, but oh wow, this is um, gorgeous it's a mold too. taken from it. Awesome! So it's a great, great sort of finish. I'm yes, absolutely. You can see, yeah, if you look closely, the CNC work, especially like around here, mm -hmm. the tool that was done yeah. on the original that is manifest in the replica. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, it's one of the. One of the coolest things that I have in my collection, even though it's not an original, it's like it's really nice. I'd love to see one in like, like metal gray. Yeah, you know that can be arranged. The only thing you saw was a great painter. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. It's, it's a very nice cool. piece. What a what a what a collection. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, some odds and ends here. So for sure. It's great to have them preserved by someone who appreciates their value. I agree. Uh, so I am yeah. I am thankful to to be one of the many who are uh, charged with uh, preserving a lot of these pieces. The question is, you know, what happens next? Yeah. So, and there are there are some fans who have have taken some of these pieces and have absolutely gutted them. It's sad. Uh, mm -hmm. But. Uh, you know, and, and to turn them into something else. Like, take, you know, replicate it and then do that with it. Don't, like, you are... Preserve heritage. Right. Yeah. You, uh, the, you do own them, but you won't own them forever. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually they will go to someone else. Yeah. And you have to preserve the, um, um, the authenticity of the piece as much as you can, yeah. you know? This is, so. this is history of yeah. something that we hold uh, close to our heart. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you appreciate the artistry, protect it and, mm -hmm. and respect the design. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank this you. was fun. It was. Appreciate you coming out. I really, really Thanks appreciate seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was awesome. Once again, my thanks to Martin McLean and Remington Phillips for helping make this episode possible. They came out to Nashville um, to, to do this, along with Nicole and uh, Astrid. And uh, we shot this last October, so this was October 2023, and I've been waiting for the right time to publish this. I'm, I'm out of town in July, which is for most of July, which is why you're seeing this uh, now, because I wanted to fill in that time with some specials that didn't need any live attention. And I appreciate you taking this journey with me. I hope uh, it's been enlightening uh, to see some of these pieces up close. I hope just as much for you as it did for me, uh, that it uh, pulled the magic back a little bit on uh, what it is that some of this stuff uh, really looks like under the cover. When you pop off, 
you know, the hood, when you unzip the monster's back, what's inside? It's something that's not as spectacular, but it still serves a functional uh, purpose. So I hope I was able to give you the same experience that uh, that I got when I first saw a lot of this stuff. It's like, oh, it really is just magic. It's not real. It's just, you know, a piece in time. Uh, and that's all it's used for is uh, uh, appearing on a show and then being scattered to the wind. So I appreciate you joining me uh, for this episode. If you enjoy Stargate and you want to see more content like this on YouTube, please click that like button. It really does make a difference and help the shows. It, it really does help the show grow its audience. And if you have a Stargate friend out there, send this to them as well. And uh, we really appreciate uh, all of the assistance in helping to get uh, Dial the Gate and our show into uh, the hands of other Stargate fans as we are waiting for Amazon to announce something else for MGM. So that's all I've got for you. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate. I hope you've enjoyed a uh, little visit around my home, and I will see you on the other side. Okay. No, I need a second now because he just slammed him so good. <laughs>